Good morning, Sploot Nation. How we doing? How we living? It is yet another NFL Sunday, and we are excited to get going here at Angry Corgi Productions. We will get C Note on the phone. Not too much. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Good. Well, let me shut off the uh, stream sound so I don't have double going on here. Okay, now we're good. Sounds good. Your mic sounds awesome today, by the way. I also think that now that I'm not by the saltwater tank, I can actually hear everything you say nice and clear. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, not right now, I'm actually really happy. You actually sound super clear. I moved into, we kind of had a, a spare room there that we uh, we never use, so that is going to be my new domain for streaming. But welcome, NC. You know, thank you so much for joining us. It is week eight in the NFL. Last week, uh, basically, me and Canadian shat the bed in picks. I started going over them. I was just watching before we got going here. I got to about, you know, one out of three. Yeah, we you know we'll we'll mulligan this. We'll mulligan the uh, the first half of games were just absolutely atrocious last week, and right now live we have the uh, Denver Broncos uh, at the Jacksonville Jaguars, I guess. But it is in the UK, so kind of not really home for the Jaguars either. But that is. Yeah, I was saying, I, yeah, I was talking to someone else uh, about the games yesterday, and I just, I don't know, uh, just, you know how I feel about Russell Wilson. I just don't think that. What? Oh, I like, you know, the guy's doing high knees on the plane, getting ready for this game, and I think when I first tuned in, it was 10 to nothing, and Russell Wilson, I think, was two for four. Uh, one interception and like 10 yards. It was just uh, an oh, absolute shit show. I don't know why I'm, I'm clicking the wrong things here, so you know what? I apologize. Oh, but, yeah, uh, I'm just Yeah, no problem, buddy. Like, I would never come between you and the missus, don't you worry. I, Last week was just an absolute uh, shit show of games. It wasn't too bad. Uh, Canadian came, or was, uh, it was basically just me on camera chatting with Canadian, but it wasn't too bad last week, just as far as all, a lot of the games went, you know, there were some obvious ones, but uh, yeah, we can recap last week. Uh, we ha Oh, one thing you did miss from last week, we did have a bet between... Uh, myself and Canadian. Canadian guessed that the score in the Patriots uh, Bears game on Monday night was going to be 27 to nothing for the uh, Patriots. Uh, we will get to that. That did not happen. Bears pulled out a huge, huge win. Dan saved his money. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll find another time where uh, me and Canadian can make another five gifted wager. But at least spice it up a little bit here. But let's talk about last week so browns and ravens both of us uh had taken the ravens last week so not no big surprise there uh, a little bit closer of a game than we would have guessed um you know ravens held out to win 23 to 20 justin tucker is still the man easily one of the most valuable fantasy football players i have ever owned um yeah like yeah like i said this wasn't cleveland's not a bad team but they're just not good enough to win it Jacoby Brissett went 22 for 27 for 258 yards. That's not bad. But we got goose eggs uh, under the touchdowns. You got to get it out there. The thing is, they're relying so heavily on the run game that, uh, that yeah, it, it's just... And it's not like you don't have people to throw to. You've got Amari Cooper. You've got Donovan Peoples-Jones. I think Njoku was out hurt. 
but yeah, like you, you, you've always had. Cleveland has never been bad for receivers. They've always had like since OBJ, Jarvis Landry. We have Iron Man Duck. Thank you for playing the sheep scream. Uh, welcome. They have a really good running game, and 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 that's it. Like both Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb scored touchdowns last week, um, but yeah, it's just um, I, I don't know. They're just not getting it done through the air. Sorry, as I take a sip there. Uh, Iron Man Duck, welcome in. Sorry, go ahead. But yeah, but yeah, like that's like I don't know the uh, I know it's a divisional game. But uh, Baltimore isn't really decisively winning games. No, they're not. You know, we'll we'll get to the Thursday nighter, but I, you know, they 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 needed this win, they got it, good for them. Uh, but yeah, it's I don't know. Baltimore hasn't been. I don't know how well they're going to do in the playoffs if they can't absolutely handle a game like an entire game, like. I guess all you need is that point to win, but still, it's they're they're like I said that what was that stat at the beginning of the season? There they were two and two, and they had been leading in every game except for the last fourteen seconds or something. And yeah, uh, yeah you know, it's just it's shit like that. They're not playing entire games, like basically, like that fourteen seconds doesn't really seem like a lot, but you have to play through the final whistle. Yeah, and that, you gotta... because this four and three should really be a six and two. Or six and one, yeah. like you know, I, 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 they have played extremely well, but yeah, I don't know. There, there's, they're not winning those huge games. But the thing is, they lost Wink Martindale. He went to the Giants, and now look at the Giants, right? Giants are absolutely like they're still playing catch up. They are not the Giants of old, but uh, Big Blue's putting up some numbers, and your division is getting pretty fucking tough. Yeah, uh, yeah, dude. I mean, the Giants are winning six and one. Yep. Yeah, and they might actually get better without Carson Wentz. So yeah, uh, I'm still a big Taylor Heineke fan. That's terrifying. It's, For me, that's terrifying. Well, hey, you guys were the dumpster fire of, of the NFL last year. Like, it was just kind of, uh, okay, well, we're going to, at least you guys put up, well, not really a fight, but, you know, um, you didn't have much to go against in your division. Like, those, those, those were easy six wins. Um, yes. But, yeah. <clears throat> oh, hey, Iron Man Duck, I'd be good and listen and not to be uh, crazy for the football show. Hey, you, you can do what you want, Iron Man Duck. Do your thing. <clears throat> I just apologize if I get into to the, to the talk. But uh, we'll move on to the next game. And this was one of the biggest upsets of the week, if not the biggest upset of the week. Uh, Panthers were hosting Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. Uh, Tom Brady lost this game like he lost his ex-wife. Um, he just kind of let it go. Um, and that was the thing. Panthers just got rid of CMC. They had just gotten rid of, um, um, Robbie Anderson. Um, they were not in any way, shape or form expected to do anything. I didn't expect them to do anything. And it's not like Tom Brady had a shitty game. 32 for 49, 290, no touchdowns, no interceptions. He still put up about 300 yards in the air. Like, but, uh, but that's it. It just, it just wasn't. Meant oh, to be. Question. Go ahead. This is fucking Twilight Zone shit, pal. Like, I don't even know what to say. I don't think Tampa Bay's that. They have a lot of their returning people from the Super Bowl. I think a lot of it is coaching, to be honest with you. Um,. You know, Todd Bulls has never been a really winning coach. Um, he is a great defensive coordinator. He is a great coordinator. But as far as head coaching, he's not the best. I think losing B.A., because B.A. kept people fucking in line. Like, B.A. did not put up with shit. Todd Bulls is a very laissez-faire kind of coach. Um, but... And that's it. Like, and again, I know it was the Jets, but look what Todd Bulls did with the Jets. Not much, right? They won a couple games... They got by. I'm not saying that he's a bad coach by any way, shape, means, but I think he is a much better coordinator than he is 
a coach or a head coach. So and I think that's a big problem. Um, you know, you don't you have Leonard Fournette, you've got Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. Uh, I know the other big thing in Tampa Bay is they lost their starting center and their backup center. And I think the O line is just depleted to a point where they just can't stay up anymore. But um, kudos lost to Carolina. The, lost for the season, or? Yeah. Yeah, Ryan Jensen went down in preseason, and then their backup, I think, like week two or three, got hurt. Because when he was in there, they were still, I think, two and one. It wasn't too bad. So, um, yeah, their season might be over. <laughs> and and that's it. And, and everything with Tom Brady. Like, and like I said last week, um, Tom Brady should have pulled shoot last season and or last season and stayed gone. Uh, I, I like I feel bad for the guy at this point. Like his life is in shambles. The game is in shambles. Uh, he's used to winning. This is the first time I've seen him lose at everything. Um, I think he went, I don't know, maybe he went back because home life wasn't great. That could be it. Right? It just boiled over. Giselle is like, you know, I, we, we can sit here and speculate. We can do the Dr. Phil shit all day. I am, I'm not going to do that, you know. Tom Brady, you know, I just don't want to see him go out like this. I didn't, like, if he goes out on a non-playoff season, man, fuck. That. Well, the thing is, he can afford to, though. Like, if he plays another season next year, he can probably make the playoffs. Like, Saints aren't going to change. Panthers are going to draft a quarterback. They're just amassing picks now. But whether or not they're going to be ready to go uh, next year. I have a... I'm going to call this shot right now. Eric Bieniemy is going to be the head coach of the Carolina Panthers next year. If the Chiefs go to the playoffs and make it to the Final Four... I have a feeling Eric Bieniemy will go to the Panthers. Why? Because the Carolina Panthers tend to make very bad choices at head coaching. B, there's probably a reason nobody has taken Eric Bieniemy, and I know he's, you know, he's an again, much like Todd Bowles, a great fucking coordinator. But are people gonna follow him? Because I know a lot of people talk a lot of like that have played for him. He seems to have a very um, abrasive personality. Uh, from what a lot of people say about the interview. But, you know, the guy's just got to go out there. I think Carolina might take a flyer on Um And, yeah, and that's it. And he's got a whole bunch of draft picks. He can do whatever he wants. If he loses next season, he loses next season. But uh, I, I, would, I would put that name in the Carolina Panthers uh, ring of people they'll talk to. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to call that now. I, 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 well, they you got to remember the team sold. Um, when uh, what was his name? Uh, was it Richardson? The name before, but anyways, uh, the old white there who decided to make very uh, sexual remarks and then racist remarks. Um, you know, he was ousted. David Tepper bought the uh, bought the Panthers what three years ago, and that's kind of when it's been in its downfall. Like uh, the Matt Rule project didn't work out. Uh, they kept going after Cam Newton. They just kind of threw whatever. Like, they had CMC. They didn't need a good quarterback, but CMC kept getting hurt. Um, now, he's with the 49ers. He'll probably have a, a little healthier of a of a life there. But, I think that change might actually end up... Oh, shit. Sorry, just cracked my knuckles. Yeah. Um, I think that change might have San Francisco at least playoff battle. They might at least... I think I think they will. I think Seattle and and uh, and and the Forty ers make it out of that division into the playoffs. But yeah, like I said, big shout out to the Panthers. Um, we all we all counted you out of that game. I'm pretty sure I called you the Kitty Cats last week. I apologize. Um, Tom, sorry man, sorry man. Yeah, but you can't go out like this. I I refuse to let you go out like this. But we'll move on to the next game from last week. Ah. Uh, 
The Falcons were visiting the Bengals. The Bengals are playing like the Bengals of last year again. They got it figured out. 35-17 victory over the Falcons. Big blow to the Bengals this week, though, is they will be out Jamar Chase for at least four weeks. Um, he did avoid the IR, so he should be coming back in that four to five week span. Um, you know, uh, what was I, I? I wanted to say it's the ankle. I might be wrong though, but it wasn't anything crazy. It was just enough to keep him out. But uh, I don't think they've got much to worry about. Like I said, Baltimore isn't winning anything decisive. Cleveland keeps finding ways to lose games. And Pittsburgh, without T.J. Watt, uh, has only won one game. He's coming back soon, though. But I don't know if they've got enough to make a run. But uh, I, I, think, I, I think the Bengals just need to coast in there. But they also have T. Higgins. They have a lot of talent. Like, the Bengals aren't, like, going to be done just because Jamar Chase. It sure as fuck, it, 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 it sucks. But, uh, Joey, they'll be, okay. they'll be fine. They got other people to throw the ball to. Um, um, how's their offensive line looking? Like, is Burrow it, it's still the same. It is still okay. the same. But he's just finding better ways to get around it. Gotcha. But... And that's it. And, he, and you don't want to see the guy get hurt either. Like, because yeah. this is starting to feel like RG3. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, the guy is just forced to run. And then what happens when he blows his ACL and he just can't run no more? Yeah. But no Mariota did Mariota things. You know, 8 for 13, 124 for, one, uh, for a touchdown. Um, Tyler uh, um, Algier... If you're playing DraftKings or uh, you're just looking for a fantasy pickup, I would look to him. Uh, I think he's got another week this week without uh, Cordero Patterson, who I think is expected back next week, or at least ready to practice. But uh, Tyler Algier has been playing great. Um, you know, 16 carries, 50 yards, and a touchdown. Nothing crazy, but he's on the fucking Atlanta Falcons. Give, give the guy some props. Um, he's making it happen. Um, but other than that, uh, Falcons, you know, they're the Falcons. They'll be they'll be a 500 team um, until they figure out something at quarterback. Uh, you kind of get and Mariota is not bad, but Mariota isn't what everybody talked about him being when he went to Tennessee in that draft. And it's the same with Jameis Winston. They were good. They were better than anything else, but they were very much overhyped. I think they they both got thrown into positions way too early. Uh, Mariota was doing good as backup uh, to Derek Carr in Vegas, uh, but that's the thing. But he's 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 a good quarterback. He's not a great quarterback. Yeah, yeah. You know. It's weird, like, it's weird, like, just off of this. Like, I'm starting to see, like, all the teams that were kind of, like, not great through my childhood, there's a little bit of parity coming, like, where you're starting to see those Well, and the problem too is you, you get to a point where you have to point at ownership. Like there, there is something going on. Like it's not like let's look at the Commanders. Perfect example. Ron Rivera is not the problem with the Commanders. I don't think. Always has been, probably always will be. Jack Del Rio, yeah, he's an asshole, but great fucking coach. He was a winning fucking coach. But this is the thing is, then you look at Dan Sutter, like, there's just so much shit around there. Players don't want to play there. Um, you know, because who was it? Wasn't it fucking Brandon Albert? Or, or, yeah, he wanted to leave so many times. He was trying to get out of his contract for years. He hated it there. You know. Really? I went, school, I went to high school with Brandon Albert. Really? Yes. I went Fuck. to high school with Brandon Albert. This man, we were playing like a pickup football game on the side of the high school. This man hit me so fucking hard. <laughs> I was just like, uh, okay, I can't do football, but I can do rugby. This man, this man is a mouth of a person, dude. He's the funny thing. He is a really good basketball player. Oh, fuck. 
fuck, I got a whole lot. I get. Well, that, 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 that's fucking awesome. But yeah, I can only imagine. Oh, I don't know if I could watch. Like, oh, that's a big man to be moving in basketball. Like, I can barely do it, and I'm short as fuck. But. But that, so, and that's it. And like you were saying with the parody with some of these teams, it's just like, I don't know what's up with the Falcons. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and Arthur Smith, like his dad runs FedEx. Like his dad yeah. is the like presidency, like, yeah, and he's not dumb, but like he did very well. Uh, for those who don't know who Arthur Smith was, he was actually the offensive coordinator for the Titans for all those years they went to the playoffs. But yeah. he also... He, you know, he did it with Ryan Tannehill. Um, he did have A.J. Brown at the time. Uh, you know, Derrick Henry sure as shit helps. But that's the thing with the Falcons. The Falcons just, when they had Devontae Freeman, or Foreman, sorry, uh, they ran the ball a lot better. They they used to be a ground and pound team. They had their, their tools. But they were always like a just above 500 team. But it doesn't seem to be getting any better. You kind of want to see something happen. I do remember. Up, up Fuck, or you know. But the thing is, picks. they drafted Desmond Ritter. Desmond Ritter yeah. was a great college quarterback. Uh, I know you're not losing to a point yet, and you really don't want to expose the kid. But this is another a case of sh you know just a subpar offensive line, and they're just trying to put shit together. Yeah. Excuse me, but I, I yeah I can't. Uh, I, I'm trying – the Falcons, there was a weird matchup this week, I know, because I was looking back and forth whether or not to bet on it. But yeah. um, but the Falcons, I don't know. I'm not sold on them. I didn't think they were this bad. I really think they need Cordero Patterson because when he's running the ball, they seem to win games. So, yeah. but, um, but other than that, I don't think Marcus Mariota is the answer. I think you need to start – like they were better off going for fucking Baker. Um, yeah. But – but that's it. I think they actually ate some of Matt Ryan's salary too. So, you know, it's just, oh, Matt Ryan has destroyed many teams this year. <laughs> he had multiple teams he's killing. But uh, we'll move on to the next game. We'll move on to your boys absolutely destroying the Detroit Lions last week, 24 to 6. Um, oh, I, I had to watch the highlights for this because I didn't get to see this game. Did you I see any it. highlights? Because this was, I tried to watch this, pal. Um, I saw I, well, and just look at this, and that's the thing, you know, Zeke's, uh, they're feeding Zeke at the goal line, I think they're getting ready to push him, they want to get as much touchdowns for him, but you got to ride Tony Pollard, like Tony Pollard has been a journeyman for you guys, 12 carries, 83 yards, versus 15 for Zeke, and 57 yards, so, you know, the chances of you guys getting a first down are pretty damn good when Tony Pollard's running the ball, um, your O line is hopefully getting a little more healthy, uh, but yeah, like you guys have all the tools in place. Uh, Dax coming back, that was a good tune-up game for him. Uh, Nineteen for. So oh, I can't. I didn't even see who you guys were playing, but uh, we'll get to that. Oh fuck yeah, you guys should be fine. But we got uh, Dak nineteen for twenty-five, two hundred and seven yards. And a touchdown. Jared Goff, every time I looked at this fucking guy, he was throwing a pick. 21 for 26. 228. Uh, two interceptions, and I believe he had a fumble as well. Um, Who got those interceptions? I think it was Diggs and someone else, and I can't remember who now. Hang on. Oh, okay. We can find out, I think. Oh fuck, dude! We 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 had we had we had such a short 
show last week without you. It was just we kind of just uh, me me and Canadian just analyzed and went. Uh, but your inter- your uh, interceptions last week were uh, Jordan Lewis and Trayvon Diggs. Yeah, your okay. your defense is looking fucking mint. Um, everywhere down from v- uh, Leighton Van Der Esch, Micah Parsons with two sacks, uh, Donovan Wilson had a sack, Sam Williams had two sa- or, uh, had two sacks. Um, and Dallas just traded for somebody that's gonna let Micah Parsons go off. Yeah. He's gonna be, he's gonna be even more dangerous now. So you guys are doing, uh, yeah, everybody did their job. That is the thing with Dallas. Everybody did their job last week. Um, nothing fancy, nothing special. You guys got the win. Congratulations, because you guys really need to keep up in the division. Because right now, you've got the Giants beat the Jaguars last week. They moved to 6-1. and one. Uh, 23-27 to 27 was your final. Uh, let's just see. Daniel Jones is playing fucking lights out. Um, I know the numbers don't look impressive, but he is playing very good football. So 19 for 30, 202 yards and a touchdown. The big thing is the zero fucking turnovers. Daniel Jones has yet, I don't think he's had too many. He is definitely on the higher side of touchdown to interceptions. But um, that O-line is working. Uh, Saquon got the ball 24 times for 110 yards. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're rolling. He didn't have any just touchdowns. As, uh, Go ahead. Just as long as he doesn't go on an 80-yard money trip over his own feet, then, you know, we're good. They're, you know, they're, they're and that's it. I think that uh, you get to that point. Let's see with Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence had a day, too. Uh, 22 for 43, 310 yards, zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. Uh, Travis Etienne went uh, 14 for 114 yards, one touchdown. They are playing very well. Trevor Lawrence also had a uh, rushing touchdown um, I'm just a little goal liner, but, but here's my other question. Sorry to interrupt. No, you. go ahead. Is there going to come a point in Trevor Lawrence's career where he's like, "Yo, I got to get the fuck out of here"? I don't think so. I think now that he has Doug Peterson, there's no point. He's in Florida. He's paying zero, like pretty much zero fucking tax, um, and he's not expected. He doesn't have the world. The problem is when you have a perennial winning team. Um, you're expected to fucking win. And if you don't win in Jacksonville, you're still better than anyone else that they can get their hands on right now. Uh, and that's it. I think I think he's comfortable there. Doug Peterson is the right coach. Uh, I think they lost the year because of Urban Meyer. Who knows how many fucking people they, they went out the door because they did not want to play with him. Uh, but Jaguars, I think, will be fine. Uh, they're probably... They always seem to play for the draft. They always seem to have just like a pocket of draft picks uh, in the first... But I think they'll be all right. I think uh, I, I think next year they'll be a real playoff contender. The AFC South just seems to be regressing with Indy, uh, with everybody else. It's just uh, Houston, like, then that's your division. Titans are the AFC South. Jacksonville, uh, you've got Indy, who, you know, is benching Matt Ryan now for the rest of the season. Um, and you've got Houston, which has just been a perennial dumpster fire as of late. But, um, but yeah, Jacksonville will be in there. I think Trevor Lawrence stays. I think if he's going to have the most success, it's going to be there. Um, I can't really see him going anywhere else where he would be in a better position. Maybe the Saints. Maybe the Saints, but I can't see it. Because, well, the problem is, I, I feel that college players are a lot more expendable. Like, you get to a point where you're in the NFL, you got, you're signing multi-million dollar contracts, right? If someone doesn't perform in college, you sit them on the fucking bench. They lose their scholarship. You control that human being in college a lot more, I find. Uh, but once they have, you know, they come to the men's league, then it's the real business. But it's the same thing, right? You don't perform... And you're going to sit. But the problem is, if you're paying someone X amount of dollars to do it, um, you're not going to sit them, right? Like, this is the whole Sam Darnold thing. He was uber successful in college. It never transitioned. A lot of these guys just can't transition to the game. 
because now you're taking the best of the best. You might have come from a, you know, a half-ass division in college. Uh, you made it through because you were the best of, you know, the tier twos. Um, and that's it. But, uh, but with the NFL, uh, I, I think a lot of it gets chewed out because even, uh, what's his nuts there? Matt Rule was really successful with Oregon, like really successful. But he comes to the NFL, he tries to play a college game with little college tactics that these guys have seen year in and year out for their entirety of college. They're playing in there. Like, you know, it's, it doesn't always translate. And this is what people are finding now with, um, uh, what's his nuts? Cliff Kingsbury, uh, because that's the thing too. He was his his little gameplay was okay for year one and year two, but now people are catching on to it. He's just playing college ball, and now they're struggling. Is and I don't know if it's completely because of Kyler Murray, if it's Kingsbury. I don't know what's going on, but apparently last week they had a heated exchange on the field. Um, I saw a couple gifts, but yeah, but who knows? Uh, but yeah, like I said. Um, Trevor Lawrence's best bet is to stay with Jacksonville. They'll figure it out. Doug Peterson's a good coach. He's won Super Bowls. Um, he knows what he's doing. I'm pretty, I don't know if he did it as a player as well, but Doug Peterson is the quarterback whisperer. And uh, if, if I were Trevor Lawrence, I would just buckle down. That's it. You're not expected to go uh, undefeated because that's the pressure on Joe Burrow now. If jo- Joe Burrow is 4-3 and three, and people were, you know, two weeks ago questioning whether or not you know, the Bengals were back to being the old bungles. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It, you know, Tre- Trevor Lawrence can kind of just sit back. Everybody overhyped him. Uh, he was, he had never lost a game. Well, fuck. Uh, kind of, yeah, now he's, he's lost enough to, uh, to know what it feels like and to work on it. But, uh, but yeah, the, go ahead. I have no idea who you're talking about. I didn't hear about that at all. Yeah, somebody got some, some one wide receiver. Hold on. Wide receiver. I know we picked up uh, Kadarius Tony this week from the Giants, and I know he I was he I'm was having some team. issues because he was a first round draft pick for them two years ago, and uh, he was always injured, always injured, and then all of a sudden, um, I know we picked him up dirt cheap too. Oh, Robbie Anderson. Oh. Oh, they, they actually kicked him out of a game. Yeah, he was he was really pissed. He hated it there. He was so pissed off uh, when they got uh, Baker Mayfield. He, he voiced his opinions before that. Um, but I don't really blame him. But, uh, yeah, they got rid of him, and they got rid of CMC. But, yeah, last week, um, like I said, the Panthers made some moves. They gained – I think they gained pretty much in a, a whole other draft. I think they got two, three, four, five, six, and seven between those two players. Like, it was something ridiculous. But now the uh, there's a lot of people. The trade block uh, closes on Tuesday, I think at 4.30 Eastern time. But I know um, uh, the well, Saints are shopping Alvin Kamara. Um, but they're apparently wanting what Carolina got for uh, CMC and a whole lot more. But I don't know. I don't know. Camaro's got upcoming legal battles coming for next year. I don't know if it's going to be uh, if he's going to be playing or not. But uh, but either I way, you, I know you don't like to focus on that. But what is Camaro dealing with? Uh, I think two separate incidents of assault. Uh, he got into a fight at a bar and then another one at a another bar. I think oh, a few okay. months. Yeah, it wasn't anything like it, it wasn't Kareem Hunty, but yeah, it was still shit that shouldn't have happened. Lisa Marie, welcome in. Thank you for coming in. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, it's just, it was just, you know, guys drinking, getting into fights, but, but when you make that much money, can't you just pay your buddy to go punch a guy for you? Um, right. Uh, <laughs> Well, and it's just, 
the problem is we kept thinking that the teams from last year that did all these offseason moves got better. So let's talk about another one. Uh, I know he didn't play last week, but the Broncos are the Broncos. I don't think I've seen them score over 20 points yet. Um, the New York Jets beat the Broncos 16 to 9. Um, uh, Brent Ripon uh, was at quarterback. He didn't do too bad, but, you know, it was just. Yep, Jets, Jets, are, Jets, Jets might be for real, Bell. But, well, but here's the problem. Last week, the Jets lost Brees Hall. Brees Hall has been absolutely destroying the run game in the league this year. Uh, I think he's averaged at least a touchdown in every game. Um, he is out. He tore an ACL, I believe, and uh, his season is done. Uh, Michael Carter will be getting the start today. Uh, they also picked up James Robinson from the Jaguars, who was running all up and down, but Travis Etienne seems to have control of that backfield, so they moved him gone. Zach Wilson isn't doing anything spectacular. He still looks like he just throws a fucking duck. Uh, he was 16 for 26 for 121 yards, zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. Brees Hall was carrying this. Their defense is looking absolutely ridiculous. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see if this continues. Uh, the Giants or the Jets are, uh, yeah, five and two, man, five and two. They're making some moves at running back. If James Robinson has as good as a game today as he's been playing in Jacksonville, uh, he's been putting up close to 100 yards a game and a touchdown. I think they can compete. I actually think it's the Jets' offensive line uh, that is absolutely dominating um, because they just have so they have so much time to throw the ball. Um, so the Jets' offensive line is looking like the Nick Mangold offensive line of uh, about a decade ago, and that's it. So if Zach Wilson can figure his shit out, uh, I think Rob Sal has done a great job with that defense. Um, but yeah, they're uh, the, the, they might be real, man. The Patriots aren't in charge anymore. The Dolphins, the Dolphins are making moves, but uh, but I think right now the Bills still rule the East. But the Jets, Jets are a contender. Jets are a real contender. So, Especially after this week. Jesus. Yeah, let's uh, let's we'll uh, we'll fire through this one. Uh, Colts lost to the Titans, uh, ten to nineteen. Uh, Matt Ryan has been benched for the remainder of the year. Uh, Quote unquote separated right shoulder, quote unquote stinking up the joint. So Sam Ellinger is going to be making his start for the Colts today. Uh, the Packers lose a fucking another one, 21 to 23 to the Commanders. I, I like Ty, man, Taylor Heineke finds ways to win. I love Taylor Heineke. Um, you know, he's, he is. It's like watching just like a really impassioned college player. I think the guy was driving Uber uh, when they actually picked him up to the practice squad last year or something. I remember why I like listening to to something, but um, but Aaron Rodgers uh, made the comment that too many people are making too many mistakes. Uh, Alan Lazard has been dropping a lot of balls. Aaron Jones has been doing his job, but that but this is it. They they got rid of Devonte Adams. Uh, MVS, and they don't have much to show for it now. Taylor Heineke for the Commanders on the other side. 20 for 33, 201 yard, two touchdowns, one interception. That's all he needed, and that's it. It wasn't anything scary, Terry, for one touchdown, 73 yards. Curtis Samuel, 53 yards. Um, yeah, you know, everybody on the Commanders was clicking. Like I said, Ron Rivera is a great coach. Um, but, yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in Green Bay. Uh, they are in trouble. Um, it is just... And I, and I don't know. Like, you have A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones. You have the running game. Your defense is a little suspect. Um, but just... This is just... And same thing with Rodgers. Should have Rodgers just retired after a double MVP and walked away? Yeah. It's just like, dude, maybe it might have been time to hang him up, bro. 
Well, but it's like playing video games as an older person. You just don't have those moves sometimes. You want to. Like, the other day, I visibly, like, I got nauseous playing that fucking game because I can't even play a simulator game because I feel dizzy as an old man. Uh, you know, and, and that's it. But, like, how are you going to compete with guys like Micah Parsons still? You've lost that step. Um, but that was it. But Atlanta was always mediocre. So it was okay for Matt Ryan to be mediocre. But I think losing Calvin Ridley to gambling was a big thing. Um, cause I'm pretty sure they actually still have to pay him. There was something fucking weird about that. But, um, but yeah, man, like, I don't know. It, it's definitely that year. Like Ben walked out, Ben, it happened to Ben last year. Ben, you know, Ben knew it was done. He came back. He knew it was done. Uh, Philip Rivers, same thing. He was done. You hate to see it, but sometimes you just, but the pro, but the problem is then you get these assholes that pay them though, and they give them the guaranteed money. And it's a shorter, because they're only going to sign them to a three-year now. So they're going to fucking uh, load up that three-year. They'll give them all that guaranteed money, so that way on the third year they can fuck off. But they've already been paid their $200 million. So it doesn't matter. So And that's much like the Tom Brady thing. As Tom Brady's money comes all at the beginning, I, I believe in his contract. But uh, but that's it. If he wants to stay next year, he can stay next year for probably whatever, the, uh, the $21, $22 million. And, and that's it. But he, but he, he got his bank already. He just he just kind of needs to show up, but it ain't looking yeah, like it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but but that's the thing when you have twenty one million a season and you spend nineteen million a season, it fucking catches up to you. Because uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. little <laughs> Warren Sapp, but uh, we'll move yeah. on to the next one. Raiders were hosting the Texans. Uh, Raiders won this one, 38 to 20. Uh, fuck, just uh. No, uh, Raiders. I'm pretty sure Raiders have dropped all their division games up until this point. On top of this all, so I can't. I cannot imagine that even if there was a possibility, they'd be doing uh, doing well. Actually, let's take a look at the standings here for real quick. Okay, so they're one and two in the division. Broncos have dropped all their division games. Uh, we can pretty much count these two teams out if they don't win their uh, their next division game. The Chargers and the Chiefs would have to really shit the bed on the Really shit the bed. I think both teams are one injury away to quarterbacks from being that shit pile. So it's uh, you never want it to happen. Knock on wood. But uh, here's another game that was really interesting. Seahawks beat the Chargers 37 to 23 at SoFi. Um, Geno Smith is playing fucking lights out. Um, I had him in DraftKings last week, and I did very well in DraftKings last week. Geno Smith, 20 for 27, 210 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Um, Kenneth Walker might be the answer. I know we were talking about it earlier in the season. Uh, Seattle hasn't had a dominant running back since Marshawn Lynch. But you're looking at Kenneth Walker. 23 carries, 167 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. What did he have? I don't know if he had anything worth talking about. Nope, no receiving. But fuck, that is a day. He got his jaw dropped, and now he's dropping jaws. Good for yeah, you, Geno Smith. What hell of a comeback. Probably should have paid Buddy his $110. But um, it is... Yeah. And here's the other one. Chiefs took on the 49ers last week. I was a little worried with the addition of CMC. Chiefs had it rolling on all fucking... Uh, all phases of the ball. Our defense is still kind of suspect, but we're getting it together. Unfortunately, I lose F Frank Clark for two weeks now. Uh, not thrilled about that, but that's what happens when Buddy goes around driving with a gun in his car. Again, you make millions of dollars. Get Buddy to take your gun from you. Um, he was apparently getting harassed. Uh, someone's been following him around, trying to extort him. So I guess uh, instead of, uh, yeah, he was he was going home from practice or some shit. And then he got pulled over because he, he was fucking speeding. And then he had a fucking gun on him. He admitted to having the gun and he told them right away. But, dude, get a guy to follow you with a shotgun in another car. But, 
Yeah. So, and that, and that's it. But my defense, there's always someone on my defense getting into shit. It's just like we're turning into the Raiders. Um, so last week they had announced that Isaiah Pacheco was going to be the starting running back. Uh, he had eight carries for 43 yards. Clyde Edwards-Alaire, six carries for 32 yards, uh, one touchdown. Nicole Hardman had a hell of a fucking game. Um, what did he have in the air? So he had 32 yards and one touchdown in the air, and he had two rushing touchdowns on end arounds, two for 28. Uh, Nicole Hardman is our new Tyreek Hill. Uh, happy to see it. Uh, Patty Mahomes, 25 for 34, 423 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. He is still doing just incredible things. Uh, Jim. Like like yeah. Like yeah. And, and, and that's just it. And when they lose is when he's under three. And that's it. So as long as he can get the ball out there. But our running game is real suspect. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco is a rookie. He'll get it together. But uh, I'm not overly thrilled with uh, CEH. I think we can use him as trade bait. Uh, we can get someone else in there. Um, you know, I, and, and it has nothing to do with me having Isaiah Pacheco in fantasy. I just think he's the better of the two running backs. Um, for San Francisco, uh, Jimmy G, 25 for 37, 303 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. Uh, Jeff Wilson, had 54 yards on seven carries. McCaffrey had eight, uh, went eight carries for 38 yards. Um, yeah, there wasn't anything crazy with this game. Um, it was just a good game. It just wasn't the the, the Niners just didn't have an answer for Andy Reid. Um, Debo didn't have a crazy game. He's hurt today, so he's out for sure today. Uh, let me see what Debo did. No, do your thing, man. We we went so we went so short. I think last week was only an hour and fifteen minutes. So I appreciate us taking some time. We should spend about an hour going over last week's games. Um No, dude, that's why I love having you here. That's why that's what I played for uh, for uh, Canadian this week on Stick Talk too. But I, I enjoy doing it. But Debo didn't have that crazy game. Uh, he had 42 receiving yards on seven targets, and then he had two rushing yards. I can't remember when he got hurt. I kind of tuned in and out of this game after the Chiefs started running it up. Um, you know, you you, you don't want to see anybody. But one guy who has been fucking showing up for the 49ers every game is Brandon Ayuk. Seven receptions, 82 yards. He is averaging about 80 yards a game. He is doing his fucking job. He is the Randall Cobb to the fucking Jordy Nelson that used to be in Green Bay. He is drawing the attention from Debo while not giving up his ground. Um, George Kittle remains a fucking X factor. Six receptions, 98 yards, one touchdown on nine targets. Um, always a beast. Always a beast. And the best part of about last week is it was National Tight Ends Day. So, uh, yeah, it was. But him and Travis Kelsey both went six for 98. The only difference is, uh, what's his nuts there? Got the uh, Kittle got the touchdown. But, uh, but yeah, this was a good game. This will probably, I can't see this being the, uh, I, I can't see, I can see San Francisco making the playoffs if, uh, and, and here's the big if. San Francisco was always plagued by injuries. There's always something stupid that happens to San Francisco. Um, now you've got one of the most accident-prone running backs in the NFL, right? Because that's the other thing I thought about. And a lot of running backs used to complain about the grass uh, at San Fran because they were getting injured. Like, I'm pretty sure, oh, fuck, who was it? It was LaShawn McCoy, too. Well, he, he complains about a lot of things. But I think that took him out of a game. Adrian Peterson got rolled up on. Uh, and that was, I think, his last game. Um, I don't want to see CMC get hurt. But, uh, but yeah, I think that um, that might be an issue. If you're already an accident-prone team, um, and I say this to my work all the time because I'm an accident-prone human being. I literally got my fingers caught in a wench the other day. Um, oh, yeah, fuck. It's just some people are just yeah, – we're, we're still all attached. Uh, but, uh, but you know, but that's it. But the thing is, it, I work in agriculture, man. Shit doesn't always work. It just, you know, sometimes we got to poke something with a stick and hope that it comes down. Um, but, but that's the thing is 
the CMC is very, very, very injury prone. Um, if they lose them, I'm just worried they just kind of gave away draft picks for someone that's going to play, what, eight games a season, I'd say, on average, CMC plays. So uh, we'll see We'll see what happens. Uh, but I'm glad we took this win because this was a game that I was going to get worried about. I don't think CMC brings them to a Super Bowl, but I think it brings them a fuckload closer. Uh it, it, it doesn't hurt because right now in the NFC West, um, the the Rams, man, the Rams. But we'll uh, we'll get to them this week. They had uh, they had the bye last week. Um, Dolphins beat the Steelers just barely, sixteen to ten. Um, I didn't really watch this game. I fell asleep pretty early. Uh, let's just take care of the num. Let's take a look at the numbers here. Kenny Pickett, 32 for 44, 257, one touchdown, three interceptions. Uh, you know, we definitely don't want to see the three interceptions. Uh, he's getting used to it. Uh, Najee Harris had the ball 17 times for 65 yards, uh, no touchdowns. George Pickens remains a rookie beast, 6 for 61 and a touchdown. Pat Fryermuth had 75 yards on eight carries. Um, it's not like the Steelers can't turn this around. I don't think it's going to happen this year. Kenny Pickett was hoping to sit on the bench for a year, but um, Trubisky just kind of shot the bed, uh, so he didn't get to sit and learn. Tua, much better night, 21 for 35, uh, 261 yards, one touchdown. Raheem Mostert, uh, 16 carries for 79 yards. Chase Edmonds at 17 yards. Jalen Waddle, four receptions for 88. Tyreek Hill, 72. And this Trent Sherfield has been... Just absolutely catching very good ball and, and crucial third down conversion balls. Uh, he went three for 44. Um, Miami's just getting the job done. I am, yeah. you know, they're, they're... Actually, go ahead. Well, now here's now here is what the medical people had said yeah. it was his back, then it was his back, and then the concussion came a little later. So, again, as someone who has Jalen Waddle in fantasy football, I don't want to be that guy. But if the medical staff for the Miami Dolphins has cleared him and the independent neurologist has cleared him, maybe it was just his back. I know it's a shitty thing. I know I, I watched the game. I was there. I saw him. But... As someone who does that once a week, just going to work, um, yeah. maybe it wasn't that bad. Some Canadian, welcome in. Iron Man, thank you for still being here. Appreciate what's good. Everything is good. We're still going over last week's debacle of games. Uh, don't worry, I didn't let them know our picks. Uh, it's probably for the best. It, 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 it wasn't a great week for us. Uh, but we're going to move on to, you know, your surefire hot take of the week. The Patriots were supposed to win 27 to nothing. Uh, Justin Fields and the Bears uh, got it done. 33-214 at Gillette. Um, Patriots, Patriots, used, Patriots used the old Bill Belichick wax on, wax off, 2QB method. It did not pay off for them. Um, I know that game started with Mac Jones went 3 for 6, 13 and interception. Then they put Bailey Zappi in. Bailey Zappi had a very good first half. Bailey Zappi's second half, boo! into the ground um he he finished 14 for 22 185 yards one touchdown two interceptions um yeah oh dude it was i i i don't i think it was i literally think it was the first series after the first series was done out uh, Bill Belichick has zero fucks to give from this point on. Uh, apparently not, but Jesus, man. Like... Well, and, and the thing, too, is they went all week being like, well, who's going to start now? Because it was talks of Bailey Zappi starting. Uh, Mac Jones was named the starter, I think, yesterday. Um, but, yeah, like, it's it's definitely his job to lose. And, and it's got to be shitty. Like, you work your ass off. You had a bad day, but, like, I didn't watch the game. Like, I can't see. I know Roquan Smith lit it up. He also got traded to the Eagles this week. Huge fucking trade. Um, 
But yeah, Chicago, I don't know if New England's offensive line was that bad. Um, let's just take a look. Let's see how many sacks they had. One. Yeah, so Roquan Smith had a sack. Uh, there wasn't anything crazy. Like, you know, no one... There was no defensive touchdowns. Um, it was just a solid... And, and the Bears' defense has always been solid. Um, but yeah, I don't know what the fuck happened with the Patriots. Um, like I said, I'm... Um, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on. I think... I think it's time for Bill Belichick to uh, to to ride off into the sunset. Uh, let let the dumpster fire leave it for uh, Joe Judge and Matt Patricia to fight out. They can figure out who wants to be offensive coordinator. Um, but yeah, it's just um, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Uh, the wife says hello to all of you as well, Mrs. Canadian. Thank you for being here. Thank you for thank you for the hellos. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Corgi update. I am not sure where he is. I am assuming he is outside. It is actually a beautiful day here in Manitoba, so we'll take this last week of uh, you know not freezing weather. So. I think, uh, I think Frank might be the dragon that's still on your roof, bro. Oh fuck, dude! I come out of the fucking shed. I'm trying to clear the. I have to go grab a, a hockey stick to clear out the gutters, and then you've got Lady Dragon, Dan. I'm a gargoyle. I just like fuck. <laughs> I can only imagine what our fucking neighbors think of us, but uh, but you know, it's just, but. Well, what else are you gonna do, man? You're already on the roof. You may as well make some content. But uh, but yeah, <laughs> Lady Dragon. Uh, every day is something new in this house, which she wants to be, and I love her for it. But uh, now that we uh, now that we are back on track, we took exactly an hour to talk about last week's game. Uh, the four teams that were on by last week were the Bills, the Rams, the Vikings, and the Eagles. Uh, Eagles come back strong. They picked up Roquan Smith this week uh, from the Chicago Bears. Uh, huge, huge, huge acquisition. Um, they are going to be seven and zero this week, likely. Hang on. They are good. Ah, I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about it. We'll, no, they're not. The Jets. Uh, are, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, they are playing. Sorry, I was looking at the Jets for whatever reason. Uh, yeah, they're going to be 7-0. and uh, Let's take a look at the Thursday nighter. 27-22, uh, the Ravens beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay. Uh, Jackson had a great number. Pay number eight, 27 for 38, 238 yards, two touchdowns, and 43 rushing yards. The only thing he didn't do was throw it up to himself and fucking catch it. Um, people in Texas looked at me weird for doing it. I used a hockey stick. It's a Canadian thing. It is. It's just how Canadians clean the gutters. We grab a hockey stick because it is perfect to get shit out of there. Just because you guys don't know how to use giant chopsticks doesn't mean that that's on us. We will get back. You know what we do slightly south of the Canadian border? What do you guys do? So we take uh, Canadian Pacific Gas and we put it in the trash can and then we put it in the trash can. That is money. Mars were too wet. I, I should have done that. I actually got to try that next year. But next year, well, Amazon has these fucking attachments. It's like a, a 25-footer attachment that's got a curl on it, but you can hook it up to an air compressor. So next year, I might just go fucking ham because, for one, um, I come of Portuguese descent. My people are not good with heights. This is why we work concrete and we came on boats. Um, you know, if Jesus wanted us to fly, we would have took planes in. They were invented at the time. Um, so that's what I like to tell people all the time. But yeah, yesterday watching me on a fucking extension ladder was funny as shit. Uh, it's, it's also way funnier when your fiance is a gargoyle and scared of heights as well. So... No, I. That is money. I am gonna have to try that. I do have the leaf blower. Uh, hockey sticks are great for hurting cattle too. You know, there there is no greater tool than the Canadian hockey stick. 
Um, you know, well, I guess everybody, yeah, you just need that right curve on a blade. You're good to go. It used to, you know, like sickle. It could be pretty much used for anything. Uh, but yeah, so the that or use a golf ball recovery stick. Ooh, I like that. I like that. You know what? We should just say fuck it to the NFL show and just try weird shit around the house. Like, you know, what, what's your fucking remedy? We'll get we'll get Beardman builds on here. That's. Let's go. Hey, I can still go to Toronto, pal. I'll come out and visit you. But uh, but all right. So we had 27-22 for the uh, for the Ravens. Uh, like I said, things are going wrong in uh, Bucks land. Um, Leonard Fournette was nine for 24, one touchdown. He had an early touchdown there. Uh, 34 through the air. Mike Evans put up over 120 yards. Uh, Chris Godwin had 75 yards, but they just can't close. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's going to be, um, you know, I, I don't know if this is a defensive problem. Like, they're, like I said, no, they had one, two, three sacks. You know, it's, I don't know. Maybe they just lost too many big names. Like, you got Vita Vea, you got Shaq Barrett. Uh, you, you, you got people, but I don't know what the fuck's going on with Tampa Bay. I think Tom Brady may have opened a Pandora's box. Uh, Giselle, since Giselle's been in his life, he's been very successful. I am very much a man who believes in fortune. Um, you know, I have a blue haired lucky charm that seems to help me do very well at gambling. Uh, and that was it. But I think Tom Brady... I don't know. Tom Brady fucked with something. He 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 should have walked away. He should have walked away. Um, no, Gronk left. Gronk made the smart choice. Gronk left. Gronk said, "Enough is enough. I'm tired of being hurt all the time. Uh, I can go make fuck it. What is he doing? What did I see him all like those American veteran? Uh, oh, the USAA. Gronk. The USAA's. Yeah, he's talking to old women in homes, man. He's selling fucking insurance. He's oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That's right. He's you know, he's he's doing all right. Uh, he he knows how to market himself very well. I think they still do their water bottles too. Uh, but yeah. But uh, let's go on to the game that we have live right now. Um, so when I tuned in this morning, Russell Wilson I think was two for four for three or for six yards and an interception. He seems to be doing mildly better unless they put Brent in. Uh, let me see some stats here. All right, so we've got 17 for 26, 205 yards, one touchdown, one interception for Russell Wilson. Uh, ooh, you can watch some highlights. Oh, nothing. So Denver, and that's what. And the, honestly, I think that this two games goes to Denver's defense. They are an absolute powerhouse. All they needed was the fucking offense to keep up. Uh, but we're having a hell of a day. Travis Etienne is 20 carries for 140 yards. Um, hell of a game. You know, we've got uh, Evan Ingram's got a touchdown. Uh, Zay Jones has got 20 yards. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, this is not a game I was looking forward to. I I still like the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, they do very well in the U.K. Um, I think they'll take it. I want to do the least amount of time. Uh, talking about Russell Wilson and those Broncos. Here's some Canadian Wilson preach about how. No, I, I'm not going to. I I refuse to. Um, you know, I like I said, the the defense is the only thing I'll I'll speak well on. Uh, I have a few, I, a lot of people were saying if they lost this game, uh, Nathaniel Hackett might have to fucking take a boat back, uh, and they weren't going to bring him back with the team. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think this is why they wait till the Monday morning to do it. Uh, that way you could at least say you didn't strand someone in a foreign country. Oh, my God, dude. 
Oh fuck! Here comes here comes Kenny. This is not the first time. This is not the first time that happened. Somebody has been fired in London before. There's got to like, be. There's got to be someone. We'll have to look this up. And yeah, uh, here comes Canadian. Uh, Denver wins that game by seven. They're gonna tear it up now. Let's ride. Um, tell you what, dude. If they were gonna ride, they probably should have rode in the last seven games. Um, uh, you can't be proud of beating the Jaguars. Um, that that you know, it's okay. You know, you, you won the battle, lost the division. Uh, like if, if if he did not have the defense that he has, he would be fucked right now. He would they would easily be last. Uh, but you know, let's see if the high. Let's see if the. Um, if the high knees on the plane will get him through this fucking game. I saw that commercial, the, the, the dangerous sandwiches. Fuck me. I don't know. I don't know. You know, just... I don't know. But we'll move on. The Panthers are taking on the Falcons. Oh, this is one of those games that I absolutely fucking despise. Uh, let me see what Bleacher Report's... Uh, God as, as as some numbers here. All right, so we've got. Uh, all right, so. All right, so the over under is forty one and a half in this game. We've got the Falcons are favored by four points. Um, Four points in the end, Falcons' favor. Well, Atlanta is five and two against the spread. Carolina is one three and three against the spread. Um, Atlanta is two and one at home. Um, Carolina is zero and two away. If we're looking strictly at numbers, uh, I'd have to go with the odds. I'd have to take Atlanta to win. Uh, Atlanta yeah. by four, um, but. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't think I can trust uh, the Panthers here. Uh, Chuba Hubbard's out. Um, he did some good things, but they do have Devontae Foreman. Um, I don't know. I'm going to take Atlanta. I'm going to take Atlanta to win this one. Um, I'm going under in this game. I'm going under 41 and a half points. And what say you, Sino? Right, yeah, it's it's one of those. I just, I just, the problem is when you when you you can't name anyone else on a team, um, you know, it, it it's hard. It, it's hard. Like, who's gonna score points today? I don't know. Like, you know, I guess DJ Moore is still in Carolina, but uh, but PJ Walker. Hopefully, he has a great game because I think he is way better than both Sam Darnold and uh, and and Baker. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm go ahead. He's suspended for the whole season. For this season? Yeah. I think it's indefinite until he applies to come back, but I think he had to wait an X amount of uh, X amount of time because I think they only came down with it last year. So I think he's I think he's eligible for next year if he comes back. Whether or not he'd go back to the Falcons, I don't know, but I wouldn't. All right. So let's <laughs> fuck. Why not? Jerry, Jerry's talking about uh, OBJ right now. That would be nice to see. Uh, OBJ doesn't even want to come here. The, well, the thing is, he wouldn't get the ball. That's when the one thing I love about Jerry Jones is how many starting receivers do you need? You can't fucking put five on the field at all times. Uh, so we have the uh, the Cowboys are taking on the Bears. Um, they are playing. <laughs> I think you and the world have the Cowboys here. They are 10 point favorites. We have an over under of 42 and a half. Um, what do we got? What do we got? Zeke is doubtful. I'm pretty sure he's out. Micah Parsons is questionable, but I'm pretty sure he's going to wind up playing because he is just a dog. Uh, I'd say this. I'd take the Cowboys to win, but I don't think they're going to win by 10 points. 
Okay, I can agree with that. If I'm if, if I'm picking here, I'll go Dallas. I'll go uh, Bears to cover. I'm gonna go over forty two and a half. Cover, and I'm also going over. Over. That's what I figured. Uh, I figured that burning smell was the boy. Uh, you, have, you have the same. Yeah. Cowboys to win, Bears cover, and we're going over. Same. Okay, Canadian. What you got, homie? Bears to win, Dallas to cover. Under final score twenty one seventeen. Give me some of what Canadians bro, uh, what Canadians smoking, but uh, I I can't agree with that. Uh, let's see, Bears. I'm writing it down. Bears win. Just ruthless. Just ruthless. All right, next game up Miami visiting the Lions. <laughs> yeah, it's. This is an odd number, too. Miami is only favored by four points. Um, I got to take a look. <laughs> The uh, uh, forty one and a half. Hang on, let me go check. Forty two and a half. All good, all good. <laughs> Fifty one and a half on the over under. Miami just got to a back though, so I, I I wouldn't really I can't really take last week into uh, <coughs> into too much consideration. Yeah, I mean, even when they had before, were they really scoring high? Yeah, they were going twenty five thirty points a game. That's what I'm that's what I'm debating because Miami does put, or uh, Detroit does put up some numbers like they're not horrible. Um, they're three and three against the spread, but um, <clears throat> just take a look at the numbers. Um, Detroit puts up an average twenty-four and a half points a game. Um, Miami puts up about twenty-one. <coughs> the problem, yeah, it is very possible. Um, it depends which lines we're going to see today. Um, let's see if Swift is playing or is he... Amon St. Brown is questionable with a concussion. That is a big part of their receiving core. Um, who else is out of here? Their defense is just fucking banged up. Um, yeah, there's, there's, I, I, I can see this going over. Um, I'm going to take Miami. I'm going to take Miami to cover. I'm going to take the over on 51 and a half points today. Okay. I'm going to same, but over. All right. Dolphins to win. Dolphins to cover. Under. <coughs> yeah, under there. I don't know. I like the over. I'm going to try the over this week. <coughs> Excuse me, but yeah, I can't. I can't see any way that the uh, Detroit Lions win this unless Tua gets knocked out again. Sure, with the, oh, the over under is 
51 and a half. I, I I like the over in that one. I think it's going to be one of those shit show of a games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> a lot of injuries in Detroit. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, so, yeah, I got Minnesota to win cover, and I'm going with the over. This, this, is, this is my game of the week. I like this game. Cause yeah, this is going to be a fun game. If, if there was an upset this week, I can see the, the Cardinals taking it. I'm going to bet on the Cardinals. Uh, I think the Cardinals come out. Uh, they are two and one on the road. I know Minnesota is three and zero at home, um, but <laughs> I think the Cardinals uh, coming back off that loss last week, uh, they win. Actually, let me take a look at uh, their. Yeah, they'll cover the four. <coughs> um, and I'm going to take over tw- uh, forty-eight and a half. I think this will be about 50 points. Cardinals win, they are showing off CMC. Oh, 49ers got CMC, their big guy, not the Cardinals. Yeah, buddy. So, the Cardinals are actually, Cardinals have Eno Benjamin starting today. So, and he did great work last week. Um, I know you see a lot of injured peoples here. Uh, I still like them. Uh, Minnesota's a weird team. They've always been a weird team. Uh, I think they lose this one. Um, yeah, I'm taking the Cardinals, uh, to win cover and over 48 and a half points. All good. All good. Canadian. I'm so proud of you, pal. Well, so... All right, give me two seconds here, guys. I don't want... Okay, they already ran. I wanted to at least... I want to try to control the commercials for anybody who isn't sub, so at least we're not talking during an ad, and I, I forgot to do that today, so I apologize if you've been... Uh, if, you, if you've if you been uh, trying to listen to us through an ad. If there's anything you guys want us to go back on, please let us know. Um, but right now, we are uh, balls deep into our Week 8 picks. Uh, we have... We have the Arizona Cardinals, Minnesota Vikings. Are we all locked in for this one? Vikings to win, cover, and over from Canadian. We can move on. There's a lot of really, really, clo- I think are going to be close games this week. <coughs> Forty-eight and a half. Well, what they usually do is they kind of take the average of the points scored per game by each team. So you'll find that that number is generally pretty close to coinciding. Like 52 would be the average points that these two let in. 53 is the average points allowed. Um, with everybody being sick, like when we look at the injuries today, um, Jarvis Landry's out, uh, Marcus Lattimore's out, Michael Thomas is, you know, yet again, eternally out. Um, Devontae Adams has been dealing with an illness. Uh, Abram's been dealing with an illness. I don't know. I, 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 I don't think it'll be a close game. I just don't know who's going to win. Um, if I had to go with anything, uh, Vegas has not won any games on the road this year. Um, New Orleans has only won one game at the Superdome. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I I don't think I could touch. I don't think I picked. If I was gonna pick, I would go with the upset with the Saint, like with the Saints. Um, Andy Dalton's coming off of a week where he threw way too many touchdowns. I think we see a lot of Taysom Hill today. Um, they're trying to shop uh, Alvin Kamara, so they're going to let him run the ball a bit today. Um, I don't know. 
just Vegas is Vegas, man. I can't. I've watched the Raiders play football for so long. Um, this is the kind of game that they would lose. Um, I've got to go with the Saints. I'm going to go with the Saints to cover. I am going to go with. I'm going over 48 and a half. Yeah. I am still not sure who I should pick. This is coming down to a coin flip. Uh, where's my coin? Lady Dragon, could you grab me a drink of water if you're out and about and moving around? Please and thank you. Okay, here's my coin, right? We got Tails, Raiders, we got Heads, New Orleans. We're going to New Orleans. <laughs> no? Alright. Fate doesn't I like the Raiders. Know. I think so. I think they'll both score 20 points. Okay, over. All right. And and right. that's and that's it. Like I know we're calling for a one and a half point spread, but I don't know. I think I think there's going to be a field goal at the end. Um, I, I I don't know. I just like New Orleans. Is is I still like their defense more. Um, if Darren Waller is still questionable. Um, you know, Devontae Adams has been sick. He's missed practice all week. Uh, Mo, or, uh, Mac Hollins, uh, his heels question. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I, quick, quick question before we go on. Yep. Uh, Adams. Was it, it was Adams, right? Who, uh, got in trouble for pushing that guy? Yep. Is that all, is that all been resolved? Uh, they haven't brought it up. I think his court date is in November. I can't remember okay. when in November, but as of right now, nothing is happening. Uh, the league will likely deliberate after the court hearing. I can't remember what it is. I can't remember if it's late November, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it'll be a thing that he'll have to deal with. That's for sure. Oh yeah, uh, Canadian. I definitely changed your your uh, your choice there, so we, yeah, we got you. All right, thank so you. So we have Canadian 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 Canadian
Uh, Russell Wilson. I would be amazed if the Broncos finished over 500. I would be amazed. I don't think that they are going anywhere in this division. Um, just fuck. I don't know. I can't get behind them. I think I think the coach, Nathaniel Hackett's going to be gone after this season. I would be amazed if he makes it into the second season. Uh, let's go check out our next game here. Yeah, I did too. I, th- I think I bet on them last night as well. Um, the Jets are your underdog. Uh, New England is favored by three points. We have an over-under of 40. Uh, we have a relatively normal day at MetLife Stadium. Uh, there is a laundry list of people, questionable and out for the Patriots, um, including their center. Um, so, you know, Mac Jones, Bailey Zappi, whoever... Uh, whoever uh, is starting today is probably going to have a rough day. That Jets defense looks tough. Um, we, yeah, like I'm I said, the, uh, the yeah, I agree. Uh, Jets are six and one against the spread. Uh, that is very good odds. They may not be winning on the road. Actually, they're only one and two, home and away. They do very well outside, five and two outdoor. They're on a four game win streak though. I gotta take the Jets. I got they're rolling hot wow. here. I know they lost Brees Hall, but uh but yeah, we've I, I, I have to go up with uh hang on, let's see. Also, what a name, Brees. That's kind of actually pretty cool. That's awesome. Okay. Awesome. But uh but yeah, I've gotta go with the Jets here. Jets to win, Jets to cover, Jets over. Uh, Canadians on board. I'm on board. We are all great on that one. I know she was talking about getting me a water, and then she started talking about food, and I still don't have my water. I know. Oh, fuck. burritos, pal. Burritos. All right, what do we got next here? Do you fuck? Yeah, we got we got like nothing in town here. I, I I live outside of a smaller town, so you get what you get. But it's Sunday, so today's church day for everybody, so nobody does anything. But, thank you, baby. Oh, yeah, like, uh, we, we had Domino's yesterday, and it was just like, oh, it felt so good to have Domino's. Like, I grew up in Winnipeg, I was used to having everything, you know, 3 a.m. If I wanted something, I can go get sushi, but <coughs> not out here. Jesus, I'm still dying from this fucking COVID. Um, fuck, I have to become DoorDash in town here just so I can go to all the restaurants. What are you guys eating today? Yeah, I gotta go grab myself something. All right, so what do we got next? Uh, we did the... I want to, you know, I just want to see the Steelers do well. I like Mike Tomlin. Like, it's an 11 and a half point spread, dude. I, I just think that's mean. I think that's mean. Uh, but, okay, now here's a big problem. Uh, Pittsburgh is just about bottom barrel for points. They're averaging. 15 and a half, uh, 15.3 points a game. Philly's averaging 26.8. Um, you know, there's your 11 and a half fucking spread right there, like on the nose. Um, and the thing is, Pittsburgh also lets points fly, like 23 points a game allowed. Uh, Eagles are keeping it to under 20. <clears throat> Who else? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, there's 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 nothing. Oh, go ahead. Oh, fucking through the hamstring there, Hopkins. Yeah. 
Hopkins with a with a I don't think it was a ruptured hamstring, but he had something going on. But yeah, to to be able to fucking fly your leg like that, uh, hey, he, he got that win. He got that win. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to go Philly. Yeah, Eagles to cover. I'm sorry, Steelers. Uh, I'm gonna go under 43 though. I don't. I don't think Pittsburgh is gonna put two touchdowns up. Sacrilegious to you, I understand. Not only that, but then I get shit talked about Philadelphia. So it's like, it's like, bro, I need the Cowboys to come back and just blow the doors off of the Eagles when they come into Jerry World. You know, I need it. I need it to happen. I always wonder who, who is Garter Minshew still the backup there in, in, in Philly? I think it might be. Because I was I wondering what happens if something happens to Jalen Hurts. Like, Just, just handlebars it to the fucking Super Bowl. Yeah. He's like Uncle Rico here. He's like Napoleon Dynamite. He's literally Uncle Rico. He is. He, I wonder if he does actually have an Uncle Rico. That would even be funnier. No, he did a skit with Uncle Rico, though. Did he? Fuck, I'll have to Google that. All right, we got our first game of the afternoon uh, docket. The Titans are visiting the Texans. Uh, AFC South at its finest. Um, yeah. Malik Willis will be starting for the Titans today. That is big news for the fans there. Uh, luckily, Ryan Tannehill got sick and can't play today. So they're going to get their wish and they can see Malik Willis play. Uh, Houston is shopping Brandon Cooks right now. I don't really see... Uh, and he's got he's questionable with a wrist injury. So he might not see too much uh, too many set snaps today. They're going to want to keep him healthy to get him out of the door. Uh, other than that, Houston hasn't done shit this season for me to, to want to you know, pick them. Uh, we got an over under of 39 and a half. Uh, Tennessee is favored by one point. I'm going to take the Titans. I'm going to take the Titans to cover. I'm going to go over 39 and a half points. Um, yeah, the Titans are three and two against the spread. Uh, Houston is one, four and one against the spread. Uh, Houston has not won at home. They are all one and one at home. They are all one and one indoors. I just, I can't, yeah, I, I can't see them winning this game. This team has been a dumpster fire even when they had Watson. They were like, they have not stopped. When they got rid of J.J. Watt and when they got rid of DeAndre Hopkins, that team ceased to be a team. Yeah. yeah. Uh, David has Texas winning. He would. Uh, Texas win, cover under. Texas will snap the stream. Uh and be spoilers they aren't playing for anything but pride yeah but do they have the pride that is uh you know i don't know i it's sad to see i like lovey smith but uh, i can't get behind uh, i can't get behind the texans titans are f fighting for the playoffs right now um Vrabel doesn't like losing <clears throat> you know um yeah they got to keep going i think malik willis uh Fires up some new energy for them today, but I've got Titans, Titans to win, Titans to cover, and I'm going to go over. I think we're going to be about 42 points today. Yeah. Agreed. So this, this next game coming up, I, who is Indianapolis' backup? Sam Ellinger is going to be starting today. <laughs> and he had a... Well... Yeah, uh, I do believe I've seen him play in the preseason. He wasn't bad. Um, I think he played last year for a bit too when Philip Rivers got hurt. Um, <clears throat> he's, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the problem is in Indy though. Like that's the thing. I don't know if it's the offensive line. Um, if it is the offensive line, he is going to have a very rough day. Washington, the commanders always have a really strong front four on that defensive line. Uh, even without Chase Young. Um, I think that he, 
he's going to have trouble. Uh, hang on. I I do. The problem is Jonathan Taylor is back. Shaq Leonard is back for the Colts. Um, I just don't know if Washington. I, <laughs> I think this. I think this will be another field goal game. I just don't know if uh, if Washington will win. Hang on here. I gotta. I gotta look. Well, the thing is, Indy's 5-1 and one against the spread, uh, so they probably will win by three. Um, fuck. I don't know. I just don't like Indy right now. I really just don't trust Indy. But with Jonathan Taylor coming back, um, like, they're just, you know, an average of 18 points, an average of 16 points a game. Uh, one team allows 22, the other team allows 20. They are relatively the same people. Yeah, they're pretty much almost the same team, if you really think of the kind of almost. Yeah, yeah. It... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Right, I disagree. I don't want to, but I'm going to pick the Commanders to win this. You know, I just feel someone has to vote to, to, to go against the grain here. I'm going to take Indy to win. I'm going to take Indy to cover. Um, it is not going to be a pretty game. I think it's going to be under 39 and a half. Yeah, I I I I foresee like seven. I I think 17-14. For Indy, I don't think it's going to be anything, anything crazy. I just, I just, I don't know. I don't, I just don't like that game. It's not a game I yeah. want to get stuck watching. No, no, for sure not. I hope not. All right. Luckily, I hopefully get the Dallas game of one. So yeah. Get that out we'll, and we'll try to get to there. I don't want to keep. We got 20 minutes left until these games. Some of these games kick off here. Oh, uh, no, 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 I'm not anything oh you're good. Just okay. Because she. See, that's the thing. I've got a fucking bye week this week, so I'm just, uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself today. I might just uh, put the games on and play some Halo. Um, you know what, dude? I'm gonna, I, have, I haven't done, I've never played Halo Reach, so I downloaded the Master Chief Collection. So I might uh, I might just start at the beginning there and, uh, and give that a go. I haven't played any of the uh, Call of Duties. That's just something that is just a nightmare for me. I would get so irritated so quickly. Um, I just, I'm just not good at those. I'll, I'll give Halo a shot, but yeah, it's, uh, I've never been great with first-person shooters. Uh, but now let's go. This is another really intriguing game to me. Um, I feel like I've watched this game all season. Uh, the New York Giants, Seattle Seahawks. Uh, we have an over under forty four and a half. Seattle is favored by three and a half points. What say you, gentlemen? Uh, let me click that because I think I thought we skipped the game. Did we? We might have, but we'll go with this one. I'll do that next. Oh, uh, San Fran, uh, L.A. Sorry, I did. Yeah, I was like, oh shit, did we skip the game? What happened? All right. Uh, I, I, it's a fifty fifty. Yep. It's a 50 50 shot any one of these teams can win. They, what the fuck? Alright, uh. I'm gonna go Sam Brand. I don't, don't, I don't know why. Holy shit. Debo Samuel uh, is out for the 49ers, but I think they've got enough juice. Um. LA Rams run game is still non existent. But they also have Christian McCaffrey on San Fran's side, so they can utilize him as 
and Jeff Wilson and Usechek. They have plenty, plenty to go around. Um, Well, this is the tale of the tape. So, San Fran generally scores 20 points. Uh, Rams have been averaging about 19. Rams are allowing 21 points a game. Um, San Fran, like, they're not far off. Um, you know, just LA's had, had a lot of problems getting it clicking. Um, but San Fran's defense is pretty much back to uh, 100% here. It's really up to the Rams. If uh, Matt Stafford has been playing like absolute horseshit, so if he decides to pick it up um, and he gets the ball to Cooper Cup today, I think they're okay. Um, yeah, I just... Jason Verrett is questionable. Um, Yeah, I'm going to agree with you guys. I'm taking San Fran to win San Fran to cover. Um, under. Under. LA just hasn't done enough to be that dominant this season that I can say that LA is going to win this one. But now let's go see the last game of that afternoon slot. We have the Giants visiting the Seahawks. We're going to have some light rain today, so it is going to be a running game. Um, DK Metcalf is playing today. Uh, he is supposed to be active. Tyler Lockett will be active as well. Uh, <coughs> Marquise Goodwin went off last week. Um, for those playing uh, DraftKings, if you had him in your lineup, you did very well. He was pretty cheap. I picked him up today not knowing that Metcalf would be in because I made my lineup yesterday like an asshole. Um, as for the Giants, um, Giants have some injuries. Uh, Kenny Galladay is out still. Uh, Kadarius Tony was traded to the Chiefs. He is all of a sudden free of injury and ready to play. Uh, Bellinger is out and... Uh, you know, they're not doing great on the offensive line either. Um, I got to take this into account, but I don't know. I like the way New York has been playing football. Seattle has been absolutely crushing it. Um, they have established a run game under Kenneth Walker. Um, I don't know. What do you guys say? You have grown as a Cowboys fan today. I, I, you know, you've been picking your your rivals much like an adult would. Very good for you, Cino. Yeah. Um, I still won't choose the Broncos and or the Raiders. I will be a sniveling little brat about it, and I'm okay with it. <coughs> but uh, here, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go against you guys. I think the Giants. I gotta roll with Big Blue. I don't know if I am Batman is out there, but if you are, I am Batman. I am going with the Giants. I am going to take the Giants to win. I am going to take the Giants to cover. I'm going to go over 44 and a half points. Um, yeah, I, I, I like Big Blue right now. Brian Dayball is doing great things. I, 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 can't, I can't bet against him. Make the right choice.
Giants are rolling. Giants are rolling. I... And that's fair. Uh, hey, man, nothing wrong with choosing Seattle in this one. It can go either way. <coughs> Buddha, welcome in. And let's move to our Sunday nighter. The fucking Packers. Uh, yeah. You know, Buffalo's coming off of, a, off of a bye. They're good and rested. Aaron Rodgers is fucking living his own goddamn nightmare. Um, I can't... Like, ten and a half for the Bills. I think they can do that too. Uh, we've got an over under of forty seven points. Uh, they're playing at Orchard Park. It is apparently a very beautiful night tonight in uh, in in, uh, in New York. Um, I yeah, I can't. Uh, Alan Lazard is out for the Packers on top. The only receiver you had. Uh, back to Ari's questionable. He'll probably play. I can't. I just can't take the Packers right now. Packers are an absolute fucking shit show dumpster fire. Um, yeah. It is just. Yeah. Buffalo wins. Buffalo covers. Uh, 47 and a half. I got to go under. I got to go under on this. I think Buffalo is going to keep uh, the Packers to 14 or under. Okay. Uh, and we're going to go for the... Uh, so, you got Buffalo to win. Buffalo to win. Buffalo to cover. Okay, you're going under. Could you imagine, though, like what yeah. circumstance would have to happen for the Green Bay Packers to win this game? Like a plane would have to crash into Orchard Park, I think. <laughs> Packers, I don't know what's going on with the Packers. Oh, fuck, you're even giving them 21 points, Canadian. I don't know if we can. Packers have no, like Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon are the team right now. Uh, I love Randall Cobb. Uh, but it's not 2007 anymore. Um, yeah. he, you can't do it all. Sammy Watkins, off injury, not doing much. But yeah, just I don't. I just Buffalo's winning. They're winning games. That's what they do. They are not going to yeah. lose this game. Like, look at this. <laughs> they are averaging almost 30 points a game. They are allowing under two touchdowns a game. They have over 400 yards a game. Um. It is this lopsided. It is legitimately this lopsided. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll see what they got. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. But uh, but yeah, I can't. I can't pick the Packers. I can't. There's yeah no. Yeah, no way, no way. Uh, Bills take this on prime time, uh, hands down, no questions asked. Um, fuck. Uh, yeah, I would say that Buffalo is better than the Chiefs. My my defense is suspect. Uh, we are just able to. I think Chiefs get by on coaching a lot. I think Andy Reid has got plays that people don't know about. It's just the way that he can work with Mahomes uh, is something else. I think our offense keeps our defense in the game every game. Uh, if we couldn't put up 40 points a game, we would have no chance. Um, I don't think our defense has really changed since Alex Smith left. Uh, you know, we used to have Justin Houston, Frank Clark. We had everybody, uh, you know, Eric Berry at one time. Um, our defense has kind of always stayed the same, but our offense has just gotten better. Um but I would say right now, Bills are the better team. Uh, whether the Bills can do it in the playoffs, that's the other question. They have a lot of trouble uh, with Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. Um, so we will see how it goes this year. I'm kind of hoping. 
Um, we, we, I want to have a playoff set even here at some point, but um, Chiefs don't have a chance this season after they trade away Mahomes uh, to Denver for Russell for playoff push. Imagine if Russell this was brought in to the Chiefs. I don't think he would be, um, merely for the fact that Andy Reid isn't the dumbest person on the planet. Um, I just, oh, fuck. If... I, I think if Denver had a chance, they should have gone after Aaron Rodgers. They should have gone after Aaron Rodgers. You had his OC on Nathaniel Hackett, um, and he probably would have came to you a lot cheaper than Russell Wilson. But either way, fuck Russell Wilson. Fuck some Canadian brown dude. If that ever happens um, at Arrowhead, I will take my hat and burn it. Um, it's just, we cannot do this. We cannot do this. Yeah, I cannot. If if the Chiefs ever, no, I can't. I can't even say those words. If the Chiefs won a Super Bowl with Russell Wilson, it just sounds disgusting. I just don't want to do it. Um, you know, it's like she's turning eighteen in two weeks. You know, there's just some lines you don't cross. Still, um, you know, it's um, you know. <sighs> This is not one of those things I'll laugh at a ca- uh, laugh around a campfire about later. Um, I just I just despise Russell Wilson so much. I don't know why. when I look at his dumbass smile. I just oh man, I just I just can't I just can't. But let's move on to our Monday nighter now that I'm gonna have to take some heart medication thanks to some Canadian. Um, Wilson even backing up. You know what? If he sat on the bench, okay, I can deal with Russell Wilson as a is a great backup quarterback. I cannot deal with Russell Wilson as a starting quarterback in the NFL, though. Um, but, unfortunately, he should have gone to Atlanta. That would have been the perfect spot for him. Send him out to Atlanta. They might have been able to do something. Yeah, but either way, uh, no, Russell Wilson is Jameis Winston, is every other. They're, they're just, they're the same. They're interchangeable to me. He He did have his prime... Pete Carroll was an amazing coach. I just don't think uh, Russell Wilson. I just I, he's just not the guy, man. He's just not the guy. Yeah, they talked about that before. That was a real uh, that was real talks. Um, hot take: Brady traded to 49ers. Hmm. I don't know if they would for Garoppolo. Ah, they might Garoppolo in a third. I could see. Yeah. But the... fuck, Garoppolo just wants to get paid. This is why the guy doesn't answer his phone in the off season. That's it. Uh, just pay me, fuck. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. All right, so we got our Monday nighter here. Um, Bengals Browns. Bengals Browns. I, I don't have any numbers on my side here, so you know, I will be relying on you for this. Okay, hang on. Yeah, because they still have it up. Uh, let me check out power play here. The Canadians should be ready for tomorrow. They'll just change the number every 30 seconds. Uh, what the fuck? Oh, okay. It's a minus three spread in uh, the Bengals' favor. Yeah, with an over-under of 45 points. Um, Cincy without Jamar Chase... I'll give them 21 points. Cleveland, 14 to 17. Um, Yeah, I'm going to take the Bengals. Bengals to cover. I'm going to go under 45. Well, the the we're starting to see who's who, right? We're coming to the th- uh, to just about halfway on the season here. Um, yeah, it has been a very weird first half, though. Uh, people, you wouldn't have thought that Tom Brady would be shit in the bed quite like he is. Um, never thought, you know, 
the beginning of the season he was going to get divorced in the middle of the season. Uh, but yeah, it is going to be a hell of a game. I still like this Arizona-Minnesota game. I think that's going to be a good game to watch. Um, you know, big upset here. Jets take the Patriots. Uh, I can't bet on the Patriots anymore. Um, I don't know who they are. Uh, Canadians got the Browns to win cover and under. Yeah. So what else we got going on here? It's got some good numbers here. I made a couple tickets. Let's see what I... Let's see what we've got for our open tickets right now. Oh, I don't want to withdraw. <laughs> Dan doesn't withdraw. Dan rebets. Come on now. Let's get real. <laughs> Fuck withdrawal. Come on now. All right. So I made a four full ticket yesterday. So I took some money line on a few games. We got the Dallas Cowboys, Miami Dolphins, Bills, and Titans. Uh, off five dollars, we are looking at a twenty dollar return. Uh, we also have. Doo -doo -doo -doo. The ticket I made off. All right, so here was my upset ticket. Um, Jets were paying two forty or uh, two twenty. Giants were paying two forty, and the Cardinals are paying two and a half. I've got them all to win money line. A five dollar ticket is a return of sixty six bucks. Um, I like these to win. Um, Seattle, I don't know that Seattle Giants game. It's gonna bug me all day. I like that. I I, I think that they are evenly matched. I think that Geno Smith and Daniel Jones are the same person, just one's got a little more of a tan. I just, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. You know, it's... The, C I, I, the, the Seahawks are keeping me on my toes. They're keeping me on my toes. I, I, I like the Seahawks. I like what they've done. I think that uh, they, they've got a real chance. So Denver pulls off the win, 21-17, to over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Russell Wilson finishes 18 for 30, 252, one touchdown, one interception, three sacks, a QB rating of 84.3. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, not as good of a day, 18 for 31, 133, one interception, two touchdowns, or uh, one TD, two touchdowns, two sacks, uh, 52 and a half, uh, QB rating. Not, not good. Not good in Jacksonville. Well, I guess they were playing in Wembley. Um, or were they playing in Wembley? I can't remember where they were playing in the UK. Hang on here. Will it tell? It should tell me on NFL. Here, hang on. Let me, let me get back to, to this. They don't even want to talk about it. But yeah, what a... Denver versus Brian. Ugh. At least we got that game out of the way already. Where are they playing? Why, why did? Why do you have to like go through so many hoops? I just want to know where they're playing. Hang on. Probably won't even tell me. No. Well, I think they played the last one at the Hotspur Arena, but uh, but either way, I don't know if it was Wembley or Tottenham, but let's go. I will not preach his name. We will not do this on, we will not sully this show much before like. We, uh, before we go, yeah. Else, are they still doing the I don't think they were doing it. Uh, are they doing the one this year? I don't think there is. I don't think there is this year because I think there was major problems with the Azteca. Uh, it needed like complete rebuild before they would go back. But they were because it was usually Casey and the and the Raiders. But um, but yeah, no, those were those were good Monday nighters. But as far as I know, they're not doing London. I <coughs> I know they were talking about um, maybe Japan. They're doing something else. They're doing they, they they got approved for something something different. But I think Japan. I think Australia would be a hell of a game too. It'd be, it'd be like a Thursday morning game. It would be fantastic. I could catch it before work. Bro, have you ever had a chance to catch like an Aussie rules football game? 
Not in many years. I used to when I was in high school. Irish hurling, okay. Hurling's another good sport, my guy. Are we going to have to start doing like a hurling podcast? Well, we'll we'll get a we'll get a gambling, and that's the thing. Like I always wanted to get into to to footy. Uh, I know I had a buddy that was betting on the Scottish soccer leagues (coughs) for a very long time, and he made very good money because there was only like three actual teams that you could bet on, and there was always one team that was undefeated. They always won, and the other two was either a loss or a tie. So he made pretty good money, but they got to a point where they wouldn't let him. I think he was on bet 365, and they wouldn't let him bet on on the soccer. He had to have at least the three-game parlay. He couldn't just bet on the win and the loss. Oh, my God. But he he, he made thousands off the the Scottish League. Dude, but hurling, it's it's, um, Rick Hurley, who's the head coach of the You talking about this one? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Scottish so hurling. Like regular dudes, you, you can balance the ball on the stick. You gotta pass it after a certain amount of steps or some shit. You can take a shot like a home run, like you can hit the ball like baseball kind of. So it's regular dudes, they play like a season, they play a whole tournament. Most of Ireland comes out for this to support their region. And all the money, like they don't get paid. They don't get paid to do this. All the money comes from these games goes right into Ireland's like parks and rec department. All of it. That's so awesome. Look at how, look at how freaking jammed that is. <laughs> but this just seems like we were uncoordinated at three different sports. So it's like, fuck it. Handballs are okay. Uh, we'll give you a weapon. You get a mask. But yeah, if you just want to pick up the ball and run with it, just have Adder, pal. Yeah, but you can only run what, like 10 fucking feet? That guy fucking took a, a lap and a half there. This is pretty cool, though. The egg balancing is pretty cool. Yeah, so you got to balance <laughs> and then you can rip it up, bang, right into goal. It's freaking awesome. This is, yeah, this is a little bit it's of awesome. everything. You got polo, you got lacrosse, you got yeah, stickball. Fuck me. Yeah, that is, that seems yeah. like an intense and painful game if you got hit. So well, what were we watching? We were watching some on Netflix, and I can't remember, but it was uh, it was almost like a gladiator event. Like they have two teams, and this is in Rome, I believe. Oh, but, that's a, a yeah, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. though, where they just go and beat the living shit out of each other. It's freaking MMA and rugby yeah, that's, and that's it. Just just beat the living fuck out of this guy. He's in blue. You beat him. But yeah, that was uh, that that was pretty cool. We watched that one. That, Oh, dude, I, I could I could sit there and watch weird sports like the cheese rolling, all that shit. I could sit there and commentate on that all day. Have you ever watched the ESPN Ocho when they do the, uh, it was like once a year, but they do the fucking crazy like games and that was it they had. And I, and I was inside when this happened and all I remember was watching it on the prison TVs. But yeah, they had like the weirdest competitions and it was, uh, like I can't remember what kind of Olympics it was called. But it was literally, they had like ball rolling, it was like plinko, they had little boats, like there was all kinds of weird shit. But it was like extreme, it was like um, the extreme competition there, the Japanese version of the show. It was just haywire, and it was the funniest shit, but it was like a two-day event. I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I have never played Overwatch. Uh, I have watched you guys play Overwatch. I would have to do some practicing outside of Overwatch. I'm generally fucking horrible at those games. Okay, as long as you guys don't rely on me for being a healer or anything, we'll we'll definitely give her a shot one day. But yeah, no, I'm definitely usually 
awful at those games. Uh, but uh, but we'll have to figure something out. We'll have to figure something out because I wouldn't mind playing something with you, even if we uh, got like a hockey game or something going on. Uh, but we'll figure, we'll figure something out here, boys, but all right, it's, uh, it's after that noon hour. Let's get to some games. Um, I will be back on with some Halo, but I am going to uh, do some shit around the house first. Uh, let's go find someone to raid out to. Uh, I don't know. It's Philadelphia. Philadelphia is on. Let's see if we can catch him this time. All right. Oh, yeah, the Outlast Trials. All right, let's go uh, show Philadelphia some love. He is an Eagles fan, so if you are anything but an Eagles fan, please give him some shit. Uh, he has seen yeah. Oats Buddy, so I can walk away without feeling bad about this. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning everybody into the... Go in and, sorry, 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 I mean, everybody go in and start yelling, fly, Eagles, fly. Capital letters. There we go. We, 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 we have our job... Uh, Sploot Nation. So let's go over. Let's see, Philadelphia. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in to the Puff Pass and Kick Sports Show with myself, Dan. Uh, thank you, Sino, for being here. Some Canadian, thank you for being here modding. Uh, catch myself and some Canadian uh, on his YouTube channel. We do Stick Talk once a week. We'll probably be doing another recording Wednesday or Thursday this week. Uh, if you haven't seen last week's, go check it out. It was our inaugural. Uh, first episode, it came out extremely well. Uh, let's go see Philadelphia. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. Oh, we got 10 seconds. 